Welcome to Ramble City. James Johnston is here and we are about to talk about his new song, Anything Like Me. Mate, welcome back to the show. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me here. So I'm going to give you a list of... Um, I'm going to list the songs and I want you to tell me what they have in common. All right, so I'm just going to give you a big list and you've kind of sort of decipher it. I know you're a bit of a code master, a bit of a song guru, you know. You know. <laughs> oh, so here God. we go. You know, Pressure's you love your on. crosswords in the New York Times, you know, putting all this stuff on the street that may or may not be true. So here we go. Here's some songs. Uh, Teach Your Children, Butterfly Kisses, Isn't She Lovely, Hey Jude, God Bless the Child, Beautiful Boy, father and daughter. And of course, the big giveaway here is just the two of us, Dr. Evil and Mini Me. James Johnston, what do these songs have in common? I am so bad at this. <laughs> no, mate. No, you can't be. We have to go back. If you let me seriously? Well, I, I oh. you're going too deep. You're going too deep. See, this is what happens with clever people. You're yeah. looking for something you think, well, you know, Brad's a guy, he loves music, he's thinking pretty heavily about this, it's pretty surface. They're all about children. All right, so it, it is that basic. I'm I know, saying, yeah, mate. Exactly yeah. what you said is exactly <laughs> what I was doing. I was like, it can't be that easy. There has to be some deeper meaning to this. You know what's real funny is as soon as I said it, I thought as soon as I went teach your children, I went, I should have said and interrupt me at any point that you know the answer because you'd be like, what? What is this the third grade test? Is this <laughs> is this is this just making sure that I have slept over the past six weeks with a newborn? Is that what this oh, is? I, yeah. I haven't slept at all. And to be honest, I'm coming into this interview just exactly the same way I have been for the last you know three months. But um. No, I to be honest, I thought that initially. I was like, children, but I'm like, this is this is too basic. Like he's put me on the spot. Yeah, he's been I know, asking yeah, all I know. the other guests this this really in depth riddle. You know, I was I didn't, yeah. Anyway, it, that was really cruel of me. Actually, that was actually quite cruel to do that to um you know a, a new parent because last time that we chatted, you were I believe working on this song. So you were working on this while your wife was, you guys were getting ready to bring your child into the world. And you said to me, oh, I'm working on something that's pretty, I'm really excited to sort of share it. Was that, was that the song that's out now? Was this anything like me? Yeah, that was, that was the song. And I, uh, it was, it was one of those songs that was quite often I write a lot of, I'm constantly writing. And yeah. this was one of those ones that I didn't know if, I'd release this song. I, I write a lot of songs that are just kind of personal songs and yeah. sometimes they just kind of have to get them out and then I move on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, but I thought, you know, I, I love sharing my story and one of the re original reasons that I got into country music was to just be honest and show people the true version of myself and and uh, I thought, all right, well, here's an opportunity to do that and to share a, a somewhat a vulnerable side of me and, and a very yeah. open side of me and that's uh, that's where the song came from. So it was writing this kind of song, you know, like there's when when I sort of went back and looked at the the vast sort of the history of kind of music and looking at songs about children or songs that have been written, like I said, teacher children, isn't she lovely? There's not a huge list when you really start to really whittle it down. If you think about all the songs that have ever been released, is this something that kind of you'd always thought about, or was it something that just came up when you thought, oh my god, I'm I'm going to be a dad, man. Like, this is blowing my mind. I, I would say the honest answer to that question is that yeah. probably there's a reason there's not many songs about it yeah. is because every father and parent has great intention of writing that song until they have a newborn and then they don't have any time <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and they go, I've got other things to do at the moment. No, no, no. So uh, I, I was lucky that a lot of – I wrote this song and this, the song and this anything like me is is the story of, kind of the questions before River came into the world. So yeah. I'd written the song then and, and we did start working on it before uh, even the production and everything before kind of River arrived on Christmas Day of all days. Um, so, but, you know, I, I think, I, I don't know, each to their own, but I, I just wanted to share that that story. And I was, and I'm hoping that it's a, a bit of an international story that, 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 you know, any new dad, any new parent can kind of relate to that. I think so. I think it really is because it does, you know, at the moment in the, you know, 
contemporary music, we talk a lot about playlisting for anyone that kind of, you know, is maybe still a CD vinyl kind of straight listener, which there are people out there, you know, that are still kind of listening to music that way. But we talk a lot about playlists and, and it being added to this and that and a collection of songs, right? And, you know, this is on kind of one of the big, the big Spotify ones, which is Fresh Country, and it's alongside, you know, the other kind of big country bangers. And as I was looking through, James, I saw that yours was kind of in the, in the first 20 songs, like the only one that's kind of got piano. And it opens up in this sort of really kind of, um, it's very vulnerable. It really is. Yeah. And it kind of opens up. I mean, it's not about drinking. You know what I mean? It's no. not a party song. It's a song about... It, it is about vulnerability. I, I really like how you put it like that. Yeah, it's really touching. I honestly, when I when I put it out, I had, there's different songs that I feel will connect in a different way. You know, yeah. some I see as the big kind of single, the you know, it's the drinking song or it's the party song or it's whatever. Yeah. Um, I had no idea what anything like me would do. And, and still to this point, I always had this thought in the back of my head, I don't think this is going to be this big hit, yeah. but I think it could be somebody's favorite song. Mm. and it certainly is not going to speak to everybody. And I certainly knew that when I, you know, on the back of Rays Like That and Small Town, that a lot of that audience that loved those songs wouldn't connect to this song. I, I get that. And, and I was completely fine that this spoke to a different audience. Um, but at the same time, and it's done kind of that, you know, every once in a while I'll just get a message sent through to me and said, I just stumbled across this song and it just connected and I was in tears on the drive to such and such, you know, I'm about to be a new parent. And, I love that. And I think I want to be the sort of artist that has those that kind of ebbs and flows, you know, has those songs that, you know, I love playing festivals. I love putting on a big show. So I want to write a bunch of those big anthem party bangers. That's that's kind yeah. of my staple. But at the yeah. same time, I want songs in my catalog that when people can dig a little bit deeper, they can really get to know who I am and potentially see a bit of their own story in some of my story as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so great. It, it kind of leads to this little game that I want to play with you. So let's take a quick break and let's come back and let's play uh, a game I've invented, mate, for you, which <laughs> is called I'm... Are You Concerned? All right, we'll okay. be right back. All right, so we're back. James Johnston is here talking about his new song, Anything Like Me. We're about to play a first-time game. This is called Are You Concerned? Um, it, I was inspired by listening to the song. I was kind of listening to it thinking, I wonder if he thought of this before he put it out. And you've been very honest with us today. You know, you're talking about everything around the song. And I thought, you must have a couple of things. And you've touched on them, actually. So let's see what you think. This can be yes and no. This can be... Uh, you can elaborate whatever you want. We'll just sort of play this here. So this is these are... I guess it's a top five, and it's called "Are You Concerned?" Okay. Uh, as a result of anything like number, uh, like me, that was probably <laughs> the best intro I've ever done. All right, here we go. All right, so number one: Are you concerned that River will be nothing like you? Well, this starting with a deep question. <laughs> um, as a result of the song, no, I mean, not at, no. not at, not at all. I, I I think I love individuality. You know, yeah. I've got I've got two kids now and they're, they're probably going to be very different to each other and I love that they will find their own path and I will hopefully just try and guide them to their own potential future, whatever that might be look like. And if that's nothing like me, then that's completely fine. Number two, are you concerned he, he will grow up and insist on a writing share for being a part of the song's creation? Because he's, I mean, he's featured on the song. That's him, right? It's like vocals, JJ, you, and then cries by by River. Is it, do you think he'll he'll insist on some cut long term? Oh, I'll tell you right now, he's already got a cut. Hey! So- yeah, uh, I, I I always thought that even same same as Coda when I'm writing with my other son if he, if he contributes or he puts something in he'll get a little percentage of that and if it happens to be a big hit it might just be his uh, his university fund or something. Oh man, how great is that? That's so great. All right, so that's no, you're not concerned because he's right there already on all music. You know, he, he, there he is, River Johnson. Um, are you concerned that uh, your song is going to grow up? and hate the song he's gonna be like dad why didn't you write me a good song this is just like i get it people love it i get it people call you every day to let you know how much they love it but seriously it's so lame (laughs) (laughs) i that is to be expected let's be honest i I was i was once a 16 year old kid and i've i've now loved country music as a kid i loved country music at 16 
don't want to play country music because guess what my parents loved they loved country music so <laughs> it was a good period of time that i was like anything they like i don't want to i want to i want to be the opposite you know so uh no it's to be expected really okay expected. great good that's a that's a good answer because it is isn't it every child kind of eclipses their parent in taste in their mind it's like exactly you like cardi b oh my <laughs> god she is so yesterday uh, and i'm showing my age by saying yesterday i don't think anyone says that anyway number four are you concerned james johnston that every time you want to write a new hit song, you're going to need to have a child, a new child, just to release <laughs> that song. And then it also puts you and your wife on a very strict nine-month release strategy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've said no more. So if that's, if that's, the, if that's the truth, well, I'm, I'm happy with two kids. We've, we've made that public. And uh, no, so I, 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 unfortunately, if that was the case, I might not be uh, releasing many more songs. So. You're not working on another song that's like, will be anything like me again. <laughs> 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 All right, number five. <laughs> Lastly, are you concerned? And uh, and I look, I, I agree with everything you said earlier. I, I love the song and I think it's really beautiful, but this is a real question, okay? Are you concerned that this song just makes you look like a big softie? Like, in your first video, you're standing in front of fire. You're looking pretty tough. If you were in a honky tonk and I was there, I'd be like, do not mess with James Johnson because he walked through fire. He was raised like that. Like this guy can throw down. And now I'll be like, he hasn't slept in six weeks and he's just, he's got such a big heart. Are you, are you concerned you're going to get jumped now after, after shows? Mate, you got to show you got to show different sides of you. There's there's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, it's 2022. A male can be open and vulnerable. I am very comfortable yes. in that. So uh, no, That's no, awesome. no. I, I'm fine. You can you can be strong and sensitive at the same time. I love that. That's so true. Uh, speaking as someone that also writes musicals as his side job, I am 100% on board with uh, being a big softy. <laughs> All right, let's take another break and let's uh, let's talk about you playing in, uh, at Tamworth and uh, this. Uh, amazing video that's going around of uh, of you as a as a young boy playing there. We'll be right back. All right. So this year, um, this episode is going to be coming out around Tamworth. You'll be playing at Tamworth, so this is kind of going to be out around that time, James and. I wanted to ask you, I guess, I guess before we get to that, we should probably explain to people what Tamworth is if they don't know that they're listening around the world what the Tamworth Country Music Festival is. Do you want to have a crack at that? Yeah. So Tamworth is this once a year event that it, it the best way I can describe it, if you know Nashville, it yeah. makes a, a little Nashville in Australia for one week of the year. And anybody that's anybody in the country music scene goes there and all the fans go there. And it's just this amazing kind of coming together of, of musicians and fans and camping and good times. And it's just a week of, of celebration. It's an incredible event. It really is. And so I think um, a lot of a lot of our big artists, I guess, or most successful artists, all have a long history of being a part of the festival. You know, I, I saw just recently um, John Williamson obviously is celebrating his fifty second year of touring, and Tamworth wow. is doing fifty years. So I mean, he was kind of there before the formation of Tamworth, which is just incredible. Mm. Um, Keith Urban had a start there, um, and now we've seen a video recently of uh, another Aussie who started there, which is you. This video that you shared, which is from some television interview, you're wearing this white shirt, this beautiful cowboy hat, you're holding your acoustic guitar, you're standing in front of what I believe is a music shop, I think, and you're, you're, you're playing some songs, your guitar case is open, and you're sort of, you know, funding your, your first record, essentially. So tell us about that. How old were you and, and how did that come about? So I think that interview was when I was about 10 years old and uh, I was planning my first trip over to Tamworth. And, you know, for me, Tamworth ended up becoming this this thing that I, I would do with my family every single year. I did it from about, I think it was like 10 to about 16 or something. And, uh, you know, I just, I feel like that's the where I kind of cut my teeth. Like I used to jump up with bands. And by the way, there is more videos to cover my, oh, my trip over. I, I dug through the archives and I found lots of great stuff. And uh, I can't announce all the reasons that I'm putting out some of this stuff, but of there course. is a little bit of a reason that you'll find out when Tamworth comes. So uh, that's, that's all great. I'm going to give away. So unfortunately, it's something I can't talk about, but you'll find out 
at the golden all I'm gonna say is at the golden guitars, just keep an eye out because something's something's happening. That's wow, all I'm say. okay, can't wait. This is very exciting. You just heard it first on Ramble City. You heard it first, you heard it first. But um yeah, so but it, from it takes it just rem- reminds me of like my family. We used to go there, and from the yeah. stories of staying in these like the first year we went, they were staying in this absolute shack. Which anybody that's gone to Tamworth knows that the hardest thing about going to Tamworth is finding accommodation in Tamworth. Right. And the, the first year we went, we stayed about half an hour out of town, and we open up the door to this this cabin, and. In the in the curtains was a possum wrapped up in the curtains. That this this place hadn't been open since the previous Tamworth. And I went into the bathroom and there was two giant green tree frogs sitting there right on top of the toilet, just waiting for us. Uh, so, but it's just these moments, you know. Every year it was just this special thing that my family and I we all load up the car and headed over. And uh, you know, the, when I was sixteen, I got my my P plates for the first time. And me and my best mate, we headed over and slept in the car for a week, bust on the street. We took no money. We had enough wow. money to get there. And we slept in the in this car in the uh, absolute sweltering heat of Tamworth. And we just made enough money. We ended up, everything got stolen the last day that we were there, our guitars included. So we ended up having to uh, to see if we could go and borrow a, a guy's guitar, bust on the street, made about a hundred bucks, which was enough to get the fuel to get back home. So Tamworth holds lots of great memories for me. Mate, that's amazing. And so what, when you were going there and you were making that pilgrimage every year, what did it mean to you? What did it represent? Because it, it sounds like that you knew pretty early this is what you wanted to do. Uh, yeah. I, I feel very lucky that... Um, I've always had a really clear sense of what I wanted to do. And yeah. I and I say from the age of four, I would have answered, I want to be a country music singer. Like and wow, I'm not that's amazing. Yeah, like it it was very much I, I grew up listening to Lee Kernigan and Garth Brooks. And if you had asked me at four years age four years of age, what do you want to be? I want to be a country music singer and I want to look like Garth and I, I wanted to wear the stuff like Garth. Like I've never you know, I've as as mentioned when I was like 16, 17, I kind of went away from country for a little bit. Um, yeah. But it was it's pretty much been a consistent throughout my entire life. You know, where I am now is kind of where I always thought I'd be in a sense. It's funny too because when we spoke um in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember you sort of saying that you've kind of if, you kind of came up through the clubs too. Essentially, you know, it's that very mm. old school route of like you've played your hours, you've played your shows, you've kind of you know you've honed your your craft in kind of countless countless shows right you know and then then this is kind of you finding your way to where you're always meant to be via this kind of other kind of this other sort of stream to sort of now it's 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 an incredible story and watching that footage um it just reminds you what music is all about you Mm -hmm. know it's the business side can be very isolating and strange for everyone in it and everyone on the outside doesn't really get it because they don't need to get it and then you just see a kid playing the guitar and saying, "I just want to play songs." It reminds yeah. you that that's that's what we're here for, and um, why it's great that you know there's great music coming out every year. It, it truly did that for me too. Even sitting there going back through a bunch of this old footage, it, it just put a smile on my face because I'm like, "That's why I'm doing what I'm doing." Like the, the truth of it, when it all gets broken down, and 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 you're right, you think about the business and the release strategy and all these other things that go yeah. on. But when you come down to it, he was just this kid that was out in the street, giving it a crack, that just loved playing. And he was he wasn't doing it for any money, he wasn't doing it for anything. He just loved making music. And there's a part of me that there's there's that that little child in me that still very much exists. That you know, if, yeah. if you took away all of this and I was doing some other job, I would probably still come home and pick up a guitar and write a song because I just love it. And I feel very very lucky that I have that part of me that has just a strong sense of what makes me happy. I guess. Well, we are very thankful that we get to share in the results and we get to listen to the songs. And there's a lot of people out there that are just loving it. So congratulations on all you're doing on what sounds like is going to be a big couple of weeks. Can't wait to hear more and um, <laughs> keep a piece of confetti for me if you wouldn't mind. And uh, and I, I guess just go and get some sleep. Just We, we, we need more songs, mate. So I guess get a sleep and uh, we'll, we can't wait to have you back here at Ramble City. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, man. Well, that's it for another week of Ramble City. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. Well done, you did it. 
you get a gold star. I'll be sending it out to everybody individually. The funny thing about recording from the road is uh, all the extra sounds that you can hear from the hotel room, which has been, it's kind of fun. But right now, I don't know if you can hear the fridge is just turned on. Um, it's humming away in the background. And uh, this podcast is, like always, brought to you by OFM. It was produced, created, and hosted by me, Bradley McCaw. It was engineered by Kana Stats, edited by Caleb Acebet. Video design was originally by Adam Shaw at Axis Productions. And sound design was by Matt Erskine at Crosspoint Solutions. Today from the road, that was the very first and toughest time I've ever had saying those names. Don't know why it is. We'll see how I go next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Stay safe, keep smiling, and we'll see you with another episode next week. This has been Ramble City, a podcast of conversations with interesting people musing on art, life, and their careers, created and produced by Old Fashioned Media. To hear more and discover additional material from today's episode, visit ofm.com. Listener.